Whenever someone comes to me for help with sharpening a knife and they're complaining that they've tried to sharpen their knife but they're not just getting a satisfactory edge, it's almost always because they haven't deburred properly. And I always tell them this and they always say to me, yes I have deburred properly, but the case is usually they haven't deburred and that's because they don't know how to deburr or they don't know how to check for the burr. So they think, you know, they think it's fully removed or as re removed as much as you can get it but it in fact isn't. Lots of people think that a burr is, you know, just this huge great flap of steel hanging off the apex, but a burr can be so small, you know, that we can't even see it with consumer grade microscopes or low level magnification. And the smaller you can get the burr, the nicer the blade is, is going to end up cutting. Um, so really our goal here is to reduce this burr as, as much as we possibly can. So I want to try and demonstrate the pre and post burr cutting capabilities uh, of this knife here. This is a Delica in K390. Um, so I can't visually see a burr on this without any tools or tricks. But I know there is a burr there because I have previously checked and I'll show you that in a moment. So, you know, I, I can't see a burr here. You might be able to, but I, I know I can't. Um, and if I feel with my fingertips. I, I, I just can't feel a burr there. My, I mean, my hands are quite calloused, um, but I I just can't feel a burr on that at all. But it's really evident if you shine a light. <laughs> you can see there's a huge burr on that. You can see that really easily with a light. I don't know how well that's picking up in camera. But there's a huge burr which you cannot see with the naked eye, or I cannot see anyway, and I just can't feel it. And I know I know for a fact lots of people consider that deburred, because I've helped a lot of people sharpen knives, and they all come like this, and they all say it's deburred, and it's just because they don't know, for example, the light trick, or they don't have magnification, or they don't even realise that there can be a burr that you just can't easily see. Um... So I'm going to just show you a quick cutting performance test with this and then uh, we'll do a best score off it as well and then we'll deburr it and check again. So this is a medium fine green Rizzler, uh, generally quite hard to cut. Um, I'm just seeing how I can work around my tripod here. You know, it's cutting that quite well, so... Okay, it's, it's binding up a bit there. But a lot of people would consider that sharp and, and, you know, finished. And that would just compound their thoughts and thinking that there is no burr there. But, you know, we just looked with a, with a light and there clearly is burr. So I'm just going to get a quick best reading out of this and see how it scores with that burr. So 157 is, from my experience, kind of, you know, what you would see from, uh, you know, an average Spyderco factory sharpened folder. I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to deburr in this video. There's plenty of methods, uh, but I'm going to use this Spyderco Ultrafine rod um, to try and minimize the burr as much as I can. I'm going to check with a flashlight between each leading edge stroke, and potentially I'll do a quick strop as well. So this was the side of my burr, which you can see. I passed a little bit of burr back, so I'm just going to... Try and take it off of both sides. This side is looking good. This side is almost there. I'm going to try and go ultra light if I can. This side's good. This side's pretty good. This is where it comes to um, 
a limit of my skill. I'm not capable of getting that any finer on camera working around the tripod <laughs> with that freehand rod. So now I've deburred this, I'm going to test again. So 89, that's uh, you know a huge improvement. Um, I'm going to strop now and see if we can get that even lower. This is uh, one micron diamond stroppy stuff compound on leather. So you just saw how we got a 160-ish best score down to 55 with a bit of deburring on a ultrafine rod and then a light bit of stropping on just you know one single grit of compound. And we can have another check on the Rizzler and see if that cuts any nicer than it did before. Oh yeah. That's so obvious how much nicer that's cutting now. The burr is gone. Much better. And that's just, you know, uh, 1200 grit Atoma. A very light bit of deburring and some stropping. So I suggest uh, everyone who's learning to sharpen gets a, any flashlight and learns how to deburr.